<laughs> hey, little pillar behind yeah. me. Take what, Where man? Where my boots to see that? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and introduce him, man. Hey, man. CAU Panther, head coach. They call him an SIAC veteran. He's here to restore the Panther pride. Teddy Keaton to the microphone. What's up, coach? What's up, baby? How you doing? What's happening? Coach. Good. It's good. Get you that man. I get you out there. Oh, y'all, you forgot my booster seat. Yeah. Oh, damn, damn, we would have been... <laughs> We'd have been good. You got my feet dangling all off. I feel no, nah, you no, know, nah, Coach. Your feet on the ground. Nah, you good, feel, Coach? Stop that. Stop feel that. Feel loose, Coach. Thank you for coming, man. I, I, I just want to make sure some. Why you you but successful head coach before you come winning record? Why Clark and why now did you come to the CAU Panthers? Why not Clark? I saw an opportunity. A team, a program that needed somebody. I think it's the right fit. It's the right time. The timing is now. Um, I think that it's the Atlanta market. Who mm -hmm. wouldn't want to be in the Atlanta market? Who wouldn't want to create a winner right. in the Atlanta market? Right. Um, they always say don't follow in the steps of a, a successful man. But a place like Clark Atlanta has only one way to go, and that's up. Yes, sir. Mm. I call it lightning in a bottle. The school is lit. Everything about Clark Atlanta is a vibe. It's a whole vibe. Shout out to Fast Street. Can you imagine what it would be like if the football team was winning, Stop. people see people don't know that coach. People think it's a, uh, football set the tone for the whole HBCU season. HBCU football, it's all it's crazy the whole year. No it's doubt about it. Crazy. The whole I, year. I love the SIEC. I'm a, I'm a baby of the SIEC. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been around at a couple teams in the SIEC. Mm -hmm. I built a couple programs in the SIEC, and I'm excited about the opportunity that has been presented them. So, you know, you can look at that as an opportunity to a champ. It, I don't. I don't have to, I get to. Yeah. I get the opportunity to lead young men. So I changed the slogan of my program this year is going to be Be the Reason. Be the Reason why we're great. Be the Reason why we're a winner. Be the reason, you know, you can just you can get your academics. We want you to have that. Yeah. But all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Oh, so let's have oh. a good time. We ninety thousand people don't grab, you know, go into the stadium just to watch uh, the Mavs team. <laughs> but they do gather to see a football team, and if you're right. winning, it'd be real exciting <clears throat> to have that now. Boy, coach, you talked boy. about that Atlanta market, and you talked about how this city, and Coach Mathis just talked about, it, and I want to hear you talk about how winning the city first and foremost. Building those relationships with the programs in the city first. Talk about that part of it. That's the most important thing. I've been recruiting Atlanta for a long time. So that's why it made it very easy for me to come. And I always had that one question. Why can't Clark and, 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 and Morehouse go get the guys right there in the city? you got great programs here. And I came in and a lot of other programs come in and just rob it. Yeah. Well, it's expensive for an inner city kid. So you got to figure out to make arrangements with your administrations and different things. And I did make some arrangements so that I could bring Atlanta back. Atlanta kids be there. Atlanta folks come see them. The media want to be a follow-up. They want to follow them. Um, I think that there's a lot of hidden gems in this place that go off and make superstar names for themselves. Right. So why not right there at Clark Atlanta? How, do you, how would you describe your coaching style? I'm aggressive. Um, I've had the number one offense or the number two offense um, for the last nine years in the SIEC. Facts. Um, I like to score the ball. I'm high-powered. Um, unlike Coach Mathis, you know, me and Jesus have an agreement that between six and eight is Teddy Keaton time, and, and we're going to get there. And, and the players know. <laughs> That's tweetable, <laughs> tweetable moment right there. I'm using that. <laughs> you know, I think they love football, and God understands that that's what we're here for, and, yeah. I, and I, it's missionary work we're doing now. Yeah. So I, the kids, you know, I think young men need a, a guy that they can relate to. Um, I don't think it needs to be all work and all play. You know, we talk about a lot of things about what we do for young men, but what does football do for young yeah. men? Mm, yeah. what, so most of us in this room, football touched our lives. Saved, up, saved my life, Some coach. of it. You were somebody, your coach was your daddy. Saved he was the first life. man you looked up to. So I always try to remember, I had a poem that said, the eyes that look up to me. So I had to remember how I carry myself, what I do, what I bring to the table, what I say to them is very impressionable. So I love the kids. They know I love them. That's why, you know, everybody asks me about the transfers and all the people. I say, well, you shouldn't ask me about the transfer. I didn't recruit them. They recruited me. Right. So when they saw that I left, what did they do? They got in the portal. So that tells you that they love who they got coached by right. and they want to finish right. out what they was doing, where they, they were at. 
And watch it, watch it, watch Watch this fight, coach. You know who we talked about before we came up? Coach Greg. I mean, son, <laughs> I give you guys thousands and thousands. That's and our thousands. favorite guy. That's my. That's, that's, my that's guy. our guy, man. He, Coach Thompson is my guy too. That's my guy. Coach Thompson is the smartest man no, you ever God. met, and he is the funniest yeah. man. If you sit him in a room, you're gonna laugh, you gonna laugh for two the hours. Time. The whole time. Three. <laughs> Four even. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't tell you that because we talked about saying because we th- we love Coach that's, that's my guy. That's our guy. That's our guy. And, it, and it's funny because you talk about offense, and, and we know in today's times, if you have an explosive offense, it's so much easier to recruit because I know in your offense, especially Allen, your second, your third, and fourth guys were getting 40, 50 catches. <laughs> Ain't that exciting? What? When you want to be the backup guy? What? I mean, we make sure everybody touch the ball. You know what the receivers are like? You know, they ain't, they're like a group of women. And they get to <laughs> arguing in the, in the locker room when they didn't get no balls. But then we make it competition. So now that guy's working hard so he can make sure he did not do him. And every week they competing to who going to catch the most balls. Yeah. And I like it. I love it. I love the competition amongst them. And my quarterbacks, you know, they like giving the ball. I tell them all the time, keep everybody happy. Dish it out now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to call a play for him. I'm going to call one for you. And it's, it's, it's going to come to you now. Just be patient. And it gets everybody running the routes and keeping them involved in the offense. Yeah. Yeah. I, got, I got to follow go up ahead, with this one because, because you're a coach, Wire 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 this disciple. Yeah. In your offense, you run you you run a lot of mesh, but you run that that, that high low choice too that Greg Thompson made famous. The dig concept. That's yes sir. The dig concept. Yes sir. It's, it's it's called shallow. So you run it. You can run it from the H. You can run it from the Y. Yes. You can run it from the Z. You can run it from any which way you want to run it. But it's a cover two and cover four. Beat they favorite. find it if it's man to man. We gonna hit it. We gonna try to hit the dig. But if that drive route come open, that's your first read. Let's get it to him, baby. The gift. We call it the gift. The Emmanuel gift right that, That's the gift right there. Take that. Take that. Yeah. That's right. And and if he don't take that a couple times to make that linebacker come down or make somebody commit to it, because what people don't realize, you send that post to the backside of the dig, that safety is going to take that post. But if he – He's going to be wrong. It's something about that candy. When you put that dig in his face, he drives he, right down he on He's going to jump down yeah, on it. Yeah, so sometimes I tell him, just hold him a few seconds. We're going to get this touchdown shot. Matter of right? fact, <laughs> just, just look, him, look him to the dig. That's right. We're trying to get him off that head. <laughs> get him off that head. Get him off the head. And I get – Get excited when it happened, man. I like for the kids, the, the 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 pure fact that you still get the suit up and put it on. And I tell these kids it's gonna be gone in a minute now. <sighs> the one thing about me, I've never worked. Because football is not work. It is fun. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I enjoy the kids every year. We, we, it's, but you know, football is almost becoming the head coach is becoming like a general manager now. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're putting a team together. Yeah. You 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 got to make sure you make good roster moves. Yep. You got to understand what you're trying to accomplish. And if you're an offensive coach, you got to take off your offensive hat and you got to think about the defensive side of the right. ball. And right. you got to make the you know not this nil deal. It's not more as prevalent in D two football. Right. But right. don't think that the conversation don't happen. You know everybody oh. think they need two dollars here and twenty cents. Listen, cent. everybody yeah. think they can get a Kentucky fried chicken. That's deal. right. That's right. Man, let me get a Popeyes right. deal, right. Coach. Right. Yeah. Coach. I need that deal. Coach, I need a West End Mall deal. Can yeah. I get some? <laughs> can I get some gift cards? Yes, sir. I tell them they all going to ask that question. I, I I I tell people all the time now. I this year is going to be the first time I'm not calling plays. Oh wow. I have relinquished my power of calling plays, and I'm. Allowing a, an offensive quarterback, but he it. got my mindset. Um, but I'm a, okay, okay, go okay, ahead, man. Ask quick. I think we both ask the same question. I think it's the same question, Coach. How hard is it going to be? Coach, I mean, to just be sitting there <laughs> listening, arms folded, and not saying no. <laughs> don't call that. I don't Coach, like how difficult is that going to be, Coach? Coach? We don't know. You yet. practicing? <laughs> I'm practicing. Have you on. practiced? I did it all spring, <laughs> but I interrupted. I got I into it with the O line coach. <laughs> Um, I, I, I got into it my running back coach, and I've been telling them powers, a gap play. We are not. We're pressing the hole. We are not doing this on the stretch. We're trying to get to the edge of the tight end and stop, you know, the quarterback job to get the ball to you, not your job. Yeah. And it's been hard, but I think it's going to work out for us. I think it's. I have to be able to manage both sides. It's three phases to a football team, without a doubt. And it's offense, defense, and, and special teams. Freaking special teams. And I think that you is a th- special teams a third of the game. And I just think that there's an opportunity. Opportunity here to allow other people to give them the opportunity that I've had right. and to grow other coaches.
coaches, I think it's the best thing to do is to mentor other people, yeah. mm. get them the opportunity to be able to do what I get to do. But if it gets out of hand, you know, I'm like Lou Holtz told his son, I'm going to let you call the first play, and after that I'm taking over. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good play. Now, <laughs> let's get to the real ones. Talk to me, what was your first message to the Clark Atlanta team when you first got here? I'm going to let everybody stay. I'm going to give you a chance. We're going to go through because there's some good pieces here. There's some bad pieces here. I wanted to establish the culture. So most coaches go into a place that's been 0-10, and they tear the whole place down. Blue we up. all know that that's not the right way to do it. Right. You got to think about the kids that invested and made that commitment to Clark Atlanta University. And me as a coach, it was easy for me to go in and say, well, let's make it through spring ball. Let's find out what's good. Let's find out what's bad. And then now we can recruit the rest and figure out how we're going to fit the pieces in. And that's exactly what we did. Um, there's no secret to you know success. I tell people, it's a lot of guys. I mean, you've played on some good teams. You've played on some good teams. And you know that there might have been one or two guys that you can make picks. I told you it's like being a GM now. So now you got to figure out how you're going to draft, who we're going to pick up in the free agency. Right, right. That the transfer portal is like the, the free, free agency. agency. Right, so right, now you right. go in and you shop around for a guy that you need immediate need for. Try not to overpay because you only got so much of a budget and you're trying to make sure you stay within that budget. Right. And I think we've done a tremendous job. And the only time will tell – how well we did because, you know, we had to do some real adjustments on defense. Right. I thought they were not that bad on offense. There was a lot of guys that's right out of here at Atlanta. Yeah. Ronnie West being one of them that plays for at Booker T. Washington High mm -hmm. School. He's an excellent receiver, D. Stevens. Um, he's a real good receiver, too. He came from Westlake. Um, I mean, there's guys on that team that's phenomenal athletes. So let's just say – that I would have took the wrong approach and said, and get rid of everybody. everybody go home. Yeah. Everybody go home. Right. Now my chances have lessened for me to be success. I'm depending on the transfer portal, the other things. And what if you don't get what you get? I tell you, the guy in the transfer portal for a reason. What? And people don't get that. Wait a minute. That. Time out, Coach. Say that one more time, Coach. Please. The kid is in the transfer portal for a reason. <laughs> I always tell him there's a bruise on that peach. Let's find out what it is. <laughs> and let's figure out if it's what we want to deal with. So when I tell my coach we do thorough and, and you know investigation background, I have a guy named Mike Hayes. Shout out to Coach Hayes. He um he does a lot of good work for us on our, as as our recruiting coordinator. Uh, Naji does a really good job. His name is Naya. Uh, we she do a good job of taking it to the next level and making sure we get everything we need to make sure they're academically successful. Right. And then now we think about the football component because all three components has to go you together. Got to work. Yeah. You and if work. it doesn't work, retention. Is part of success. Mm. The more you can retain a kid that they know what to do, how to do it, and why it's important for them to do it that way, yeah. gives you an opportunity to be able to be successful in years to come. Right. I want you to stay with that point for a second, Coach, because Bill Belichick always talked about when he went and he scouted guys, he always wanted guys who graduated. That's right. He always wanted guys with good grades because those are the guys I don't have to worry about. The discipline, they understand completing a task. That's right. How important is that for you? Could you just kind of hit on it a little bit? No doubt about it. A kid that can graduate, he can retain information. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that's going to come and going to be a good alumni. He wants to be a part of the program. Those things matter to me. Absolutely. All those things is like um, knowing what to do, how to do it, and why it's important to do it that way. He don't necessarily have to be the most talented kid. Right. right. But sometimes if you put him in the place and he does, repetition is the motherhood of all learning. And when you do things, we live by the rule, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> so we want to keep everything simple so that the kid can read that. And reps, right. reps, reps. The more reps he get, he's going to get better at it. And you've seen... In high school football, and I think nobody can relate to Some people might can, but you've seen in high school where you saw that team that was super talented, that they didn't won 12 ball games, yep. and they run up against this team that don't look like they got nobody that can play. Beat you fundamentally. They beat they them beat fundamentally sound. When, when, and when Johnny playing cover two, he take his two steps, he, he turn his butt, they, he where he's supposed to be. They never out of position. They never out of position. They I'm talking about you can't position. get him to bait on nothing. He ain't biting. He know his ability at cornerback. So he wasn't looking in the backfield because he, he trying to make, rely on his exactly. athletic ability to make it up for him. Those are the kind of kids I like. Yes, and everybody be like, well, you know, this kid, nobody recruited the kid. And, 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 and honestly, I read Belichick's book, and it worked. The biggest thing is it's a gamble, too, because sometimes you can take a gamble on a kid and they never turn out to be who you want them to be. Right. But we all found out that my favorite team, which is the Patriots, um, 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 Bill Belichick, 
you know, made some, you know, he thought it was him. And, and Tom Brady said, I'm going to prove to you it ain't you. <laughs> <laughs> so I would be, I would be rem, uh, remiss to think that it's me. Right. It's the kids and how I get them to buy in and get them to believe in what I'm doing. And when you put them in fun systems, things that they like to do, then they'll play hard and fast for you. Man, you just brought up a 30-year memory because Coach Greg walked into a defensive meeting one time and said, K I S S. And we were like, keep it simple, simple. And I was like, ever since then, like, I get it, Coach. Well, I tell my coaches, it's not about how much you know. It's how much you can transpire to the kid exactly. mm. and how much he can execute. Exactly. So even when it gets deep in my playbook and sometimes I want to go on and I'd be like, let me back up. Right. If I go out to practice right. and I create a hit list, so it's about 70 plays when we start practice that week. By the time we get to the game, it may not be but 25 plays that get ran because I count how many times we executed that right. at a high level. I'm talking right. about we all still looking for the perfect play. Yeah, But it doesn't always happen that way. So if it's a chance that the kid's going – and I don't believe in drawing nothing up on the sideline either. I tell the kids all the time, the reason being, if I'm drawing it up in the dirt right here, 90% of the people over there are not going to get it, yeah. and now we got a better it's chance not that play going to work. Yep. It's not, it's not going to work. Coach, it's, it's funny you, you, you brought up this point, and as, as a play caller, and I don't know if you instilled this into your new play caller, I just noticed you're, you're the kind of guy, if that play worked – I'm going to just keep doing it. I might. Yeah. I'm going to run it till you stop. Right. I might, I might flip it the other way. But yeah. it's the same play. I'm going to run it. I'm going to run it out of and, five and, formations. <laughs> and, and you're talking about the keep a simple method. That's right. Are you teaching your quarterback? Because I like when you when you guys are four wide and when you run the shallow, you, you might bring the X, shallow him. You might take the Y, shallow him. Mm-hmm. Or you might invert these two guys. That's right. It's somebody going to be the shallow. Depends on what they're doing. So what I do is I run a lot of half skelly. That's how you teach your quarterback. Cut the field in half. I'll take Cut the mic, the corner, and the safety, and a wheel linebacker and put them there. So now he learns how to avoid. That cornerback know who is my guy. Who am I reading here? That's who I'm reading. So I teach him to hit feet. A lot of coaches want to teach a quarterback to read the whole, the whole field. field. So I cut the field in half for him. And I'd be like, look at it. Just like when you teach the first play, which is all hitches. We're going to say we're looking for the softest corner. Figure out which way. We're not taking a throw from one hash and putting it on the other hash. Right. That's not the chances of that being successful. Like, who you think you are, Dan Marino? Yeah, I just said you can't do it. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I just want my quarterback to make good decisions and stay on. Uh, we start. We call it stay on schedule. Right. Stay on schedule. Stay ahead of the change. Know the downs and distance. Know what we got going on. And we try to teach everybody on the field to understand the situation and what's at play. So a lot of times when I first started coaching, I thought it was all about me, and I always mm. wanted to draw up a play and oh, I'm gonna call this the. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him with I'm this. I'm gonna kill him. So then I learned that. Being taking a strategic approach to what I was doing and making sure the kids understood what I was doing and not just calling plays to call plays. Yeah. So sometimes you may look at like look at he running the same play. I am, but it went from eleven personnel to twenty one personnel. Right. The trips um, yeah. we might go five wide and we can still run the shallow concept by the five wide. I like the bubbles. I like the slants. I like the hitches. I think the hardest play to cover in college football or pro football or any football. And Jerry Rice, well, if he was listening to me today, he would say. The slant, the three-step slant is difficult for a cornerback to cover because if you, when you hit him and he's trying to come bite down hard on it, oh. you go slant and go on it, go. And, and it's the, a slant fade. The slant, Coach, I, I've been studying you play with. You, you you go slant with the bench. That's right. Then you go slant with the wheel. That's right. Coach, Coach I've been studying. I've seen it, Coach. You, you, you I, been I, Coach, watching. Coach, I've seen it. See, the good thing about it is the air raid. So I can draw it up and I, give the, I can give them choice routes. So I can say, you know, I'll just give you a position, Seattle. If I say Seattle, they know that's all slants. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I might say Seattle choice. So X and Z choice. So they know they got a choice right on that, long as you don't cover up the – Right. And they got to have a quarterback that can teach it. So we run in the space. So we ain't trying to beat the coverage. We're just trying to find space. Get in that area. Find grass and get there. The quarterback going to try to throw it to you before you get there. So everybody be trying to ask, how do we stop him? Well, it's kind of hard because if you got a guy out there that's weak, and I'm going to find him. We're going to find him. (laughs) And when I find you, it's going to be a long day for you. We're going to find him. (laughs) And you're on defense like, hey, dog, they coming at you, man. Do something. (laughs) Go. Hey, they calling at you every play, man. You need help? Coach, get this guy out of here. He's struggling. Coach, what in the SAC, what is it about this comfort that people don't know? I think it's some great football. It's some of the best football. I love coming to watch the SAC game. 
you being a part of it, being in you know, continuing this, what can people expect from SIAC football? SIAC football is fast. And now what you're about to see is a different brand in the SIAC football because they're able to get their hands on players mm. that we normally wouldn't be able to get. You're going to see rosters with two lane. You're going to see people at FSU. You're going to mm. see players from Alabama. You're going to see them from – Power Five kids yeah. that got signed – but just then, you know, you know, now you got two years to play. Yeah. So once you sign up for a team, I don't care if he signed to to nowhere. If he goes there and he don't make that squad and he's not in that run as a starter, the next year he's gonna be a, a spring, he's gonna have to try to compete for a spot. Yep. And then after that's so over they're he gonna tell the him to get in the portal. He in the portal. And once he gets into the portal, now it's free game for everybody. So now if you got the resources and the places to get him in school, then bam, there's an opportunity. And I'm gonna take you back to the reason why I chose Clark. Clark is the, probably one of two schools that o- offer like six level degrees, meaning you get a doctorate, you can get your uh, sure master's, can. Right. and you can go to graduate school. So now it gives you an opportunity to find a guy that was um, possibly he graduated from school, exhausted all his eligibility, but I mean he exhausted his um, you know his plan, his graduation time, but yep. now he can go to grad school and finish them two grad school year seasons of one with us. Right. So now it's 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 gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting, man, because I think Indeed. there's a lot of good coaches in the, the league. They they pose a lot of problems for people. Um, I'm very transparent with everybody. You know, they know what I'm gonna do. They know it's coming, and and, 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 it, and it, the matter of it is, is can you stop? Can you stop? And, and, I, and that's what it is. And I and I got a great defensive coordinator in L. C. Cole. L. C. Cole is the legend. You know, he's been around. He was the only black coach to win the O. V. C. twice. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's a legend. I mean, he yes, the, you know, some things around him, but it always him. He's been a stand up guy for me, and and we run a pro style defense, and it, and it's been it's just working for us. So I needed somebody to complement what we do offensively. Yeah. Coach, I hate to talk about this because I, I got a lot of CAU partners in. The, the blacker, the uniforms. The, the combinations are always sweet, Coach. I haven't gotten a chance to experience them, but I've seen them. But I haven't played with them or what we're going to okay, put them together. Play I ain't played with them yet to put them together. Um, like I told you, Clark Atlanta is a whole vibe. Every day there. I mean, you almost got an AU center in itself. Yeah. I mean, I just want to keep my – everybody talk about Atlanta. Yeah, I gotta just keep it by the day you send it. Amen. When a kid ain't playing and he walked down that promenade all day, and, and by the time he get to that practice field, he looking at me like I ain't even playing. I gotta make a decision today. What? Listen, everybody, <laughs> telling you from experience, <laughs> Fair Street on a sunny day, that corner right now, yeah, coach, trouble. Keep an eye on coach. Trouble. <laughs> it's nice like you just say. If you're a guy who not getting no reps, you you start talking to yourself like, man, I'm like full string. I might not travel this week. And the thing about Georgia too, Atlanta, it don't get cold till about November, so you got a whole yeah. season. Home, homecoming, you still have <laughs> shorts. I just want I just want the folks that own the Juicy Crab wherever that's at. The <laughs> they need to shut that down during football season because um, I call myself flipping practice one time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about everybody smell like crab, meat, and Hennessy. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I was like, this is what I got to look forward to in life. I thought that was where you just got your bag at. Well, what are we doing here? Right? What are we selling here? <laughs> and all the girls laughing at me because they knew they were going to sleep in the locker room. Things uh, were going to be difficult for me because I'm waking them up that time in the morning. About. And I'm like, wow. Is this uh, what I got to deal with? And we talking about Thursday? You know, we just trying to get to practice. <laughs> It'll foul the juicy crab. Yes, sir. Uh, they all turn. Every place in Atlanta, at 9 o'clock, it turned into a club. It's, it turned it's got, love, it's it got a live DJ. It turned it, the love of hip hop. They got the hookah machines to come out. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out a way how I'm going to combat that. You know, you can't tell an 18-year-old who, who just got out of home with his mama and that girl looking pretty and she <laughs> he, say, he got hey, free. Yeah, he gone. Well, what? So we got practice in the morning. I ain't playing, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fourth train, Cole. I'm cool out here. Cole, do they still do do do, do everybody travel or they still dress fit to five a conference? Fifty eight. Fifty eight. Fifty eight is so day. boy. Hey. Yeah. That diesel you just A lot scored. of people don't understand <laughs> that diesel what it's like not to see your name on that track. And you can't look your name on that on that travel list. You look I mean, backwards and forward. You know yeah. your history. You know your if history. your travel bag not out, you're not going. Well, if you getting two or three reps at practice, you already know that. 
if you then ain't you no, got to ask. If you ain't on no special team. you ain't on no special team. <laughs> that's, that's what it really hit. That, that, that <laughs> special team piece is what it really hit. If I'm number three at wide receiver and I'm not on the starting kickoff or the kickoff return team, what is he thinking? We only take Bruh, you where we need. I ain't even going. Then that's when that walk from the – the student center down the promenade and he watching yeah. everybody sit down and they yeah. chill and and, and, and and you know you can't you can't leave your dorm room on the weekend because everybody the game being played hey. everybody know you play football ain't, like, you, on the, ain't you on the squad hey. why you still here man, man now you gotta tell a lie man I hurt my knee man no they ain't they they gonna say the man the coach screwing over me man <laughs> he don't even want me to play man he messing up my life man I'm going not a rude I'm gonna transfer <laughs> I'm gonna transfer <laughs> I'm gonna get the portal next year anyway it don't matter yeah, I'm, I'm gonna out. get in the portal <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> and I'm honest with him. I'll be like, hey. well, son, I wish you luck. <laughs> hey, that fit day tough. So as a true freshman, I was, I, was the, I was the holder for the field. So I was always You good. said you making sure you get out there. I was never you beat up, You ran over everybody. I, hey, listen, I'm going to be the holder. I was never worried. I was like, I'm the holder. I got on that kickoff team. I was like, I'm good. I'm good. Nothing like your name. Baby. That's my message to the young kids. When you're a freshman in college and you know that there's a team that was already there, yeah. The best thing for you to do is be trying to. When they call special teams yeah, and the meeting out, happen, about you better what? be sprinting out there. You better be doing what? whatever you need to do to get on that bus. Because the, the last eleven or twelve positions that you get out of that fifty eight is ninety nine percent all special teams. Oh. Unless and you got a couple of hidden gems somewhere that you know that you need to get them on the bus and find plays. And you know, right. we was talking about you know me with plays. I design plays for players. Right. Mm. I find players and I try to make them. If he the best player, he good. I'm gonna make sure you get the ball. I'm gonna find a way because if I can attract enough attention attention to you trying to stop him, it's which open. allows other people to, to have opportunities to make yeah. plays. Yeah. So, so I spend a lot of time looking at film and watching people and saying, okay, we got to get number seven the ball. You know, I, you watch your favorite team and you be asking yourself, like, man, why we can't get in the ball, man? Every time he, he needs every that touch. Thing, what yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> then you got a mom up there. My baby play football too. Well, your baby ain't number seven. <laughs> <laughs> And you just got to be upset with Coach, you real with You just got to be upset with Mama, you don't see number seven out here doing what he do. <laughs> now you're being hey. selfish. Yeah. You, better, you better tell your son do everything <laughs> seven doing. That's right. Seven earned everything. <laughs> All right, Cole, finish with this, man. Talk to us about what you can, what people can expect out of the CAU team this year, and, and what are your expectations going into this year? It's a process. I'm expecting them to win. That's what I expect in everything I do. I don't expect nothing less. I have a, a my, I, I want excellence. I want them guys, even when we lose, we want to be able to come back out, figure out what we didn't do good, and figure out how to win. And, and once you get it and breed it into them, um, we talk about um, it, you can't win when you ain't right within. So mm. everybody got to be right within. Coach they got to understand. Tweets. Coach dropping tweets left and right. I'm going to be tweeting all that night. Like Hill, boy. You got to understand now. I mean, what she said was powerful now. That and that, you can take that into your yeah. life, man. If you want to, I think, you know, we call it karma, but I think that nothing happens for coincidence. I think everything is ordained. And I think that if you breed them to the kids, I am, the, the Bible say I am. Mm -hmm. And when you speak that I am a winner, I am who I am, you start believing who you need to be, and then you'll eventually become who you need to become. Um, you're talking to a guy that's, that was the equipment manager. Mm. And I became the head coach of my program 10 years later. Mm -hmm. I played baseball in college. Not football, I played baseball. And then I went on to be successful at it. Got championship rings from me. It's just about I believe in me, and I want my kids to believe in They be like, Coach, do you ever get – no, I'm not down. I'm happy. I'm ready to go. Let's go. It, every day I get to go out and do something that I love. Do what you and love. And if you don't love it, and I can tell in your attitude Boy, what you bring to the table. It's so easy. When I see their body language, I ask them every day, what you selling? <laughs> what are you selling? You're not selling greatness today. Mm. If you walk in the door and you got a disappointment, you got an attitude. What's your attitude about? If you ain't playing, do something about it. I don't have a great player. I don't have a, 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 a player that I think that's just my friend. Or I don't like a player. I like players that make plays. I like players that do what they got to do. If the moment you stop making plays, then next man got to come up. I lost one of my great players in the recruiting cycle to a D1 program. Not mad about it. They asked, I say, well, that's just another opportunity for another guy to else. get a rep. Yep. So he need to be ready when it comes. And I tell him, you one play. If you're a quarterback, you one play. Most of the time, you two plays away. And I gave the story to the players. I said, man, when I was in high school, 
Um, I went to a game and I never I, I had on my my pads and everything and I had my little uh you know I, it was cold so I had my jogger pants under my pants Jesus and had my coach. and had my my hoodie on with my helmet because I didn't know I was gonna yeah, play. Yeah, you didn't want to play. Cause I didn't want to play. Cause yeah, I had all the pregame. You know the little bag they gave to the the chili to give the little bag. I had two up drinking <laughs> sodas and everything. <laughs> Second play of the game, guy go out, break his leg, and I remember the coach looking down and say, "Who we got?" And the coach, you know you bad when the coach look back and say. <laughs> and I saw the coach drop his head. <laughs> so I got outside. I got ready to play. I got by the center. And I asked. I got. I, I was playing guard because I was a little chubby boy. So I hit the center and said, who I got? He said, time out. Get him out. He don't know what he's doing. So the moral of the story is when you're at practice, you got to take mental reps. You got to do the things you're supposed to be doing because if you ain't ready, your opportunity could come. And guess what? You'll be in trouble. It's sort of like this. I, what? What? <laughs> time, time out. <laughs> time. Quarter, quarterback looking like, who called that? Who called that? <laughs> Coach, man, thank you, man. Thank you, guys, man. Hey, we, oh. Anything you need from us, Coach, let us know, man. We're going to definitely we excited. Go you, CAU, man. go Panthers. Be the reason, 2024. We got to edit on that, man. Be ready, man. Don't be with your jogging pants. Man, man. Your yeah, yeah. Up. What's some tight? Everybody, tights. <laughs> but tights. Get some under armor. Come on, y'all. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week, man. <laughs> Thanks for joining the show. Crush, Jack, yeah, Black on. <laughs>